Hello, I'm Johnny. Today's topics in the NBA include JoJo, the scoring champion, winning the MVP of the year, the Lakers' strong attack in their game against the Warriors, and the appropriateness of Jordan Poole's shot selection. No best. <laughs> Let's start with the first news. JoJo, the scoring champion of the 76ers, won his first MVP in his career. In other words, Nikola Jokic of the Nuggets missed out on a three-peat for the MVP award. JoJo scored 915 points, including 73 first-place votes, which is an impressive victory. Although I personally support Nikola Jokic to win the MVP, I'm still happy for JoJo because he has been the scoring champion in the league for two consecutive seasons. To put it plainly, he deserves it. Interestingly, the last time the 76ers had an MVP was Allen Iverson in 2001. He was also the scoring champion of the league that season, averaging 31.1 points per game. This year, JoJo scored 33 points per game. Although the two players play different positions, their scoring abilities are both dominant. Congratulations to the 76ers fans! Speaking of the 76ers, even though JoJo did not play yesterday, James Harden, the former MVP, led the team with 45 points and defeated the Celtics. The key moment of the game was James Harden's three-pointer at the end of the game, which seemed to say to all the fans around the world, don't forget, I was also the scoring champion of the league. In fact, in the 18-19 season, Harden averaged 36.1 points per game, which was even better than JoJo's performance. Thanks to James Harden's outstanding performance, the team also won their first away game. As for the Celtics, I quote the words of Jason Tatum and Al Horford, simply put, the defense was not strong enough. In fact, the Celtics' defense had problems in the first-round series against the Hawks. This is something the team needs to adjust going forward. In addition, Marcus Smart, the big lock in the backcourt, may not play in the second game, but it's not a big problem because the Celtics have enough personnel in the backcourt. I hope this information can be useful for everyone. Before we move on to the next topic, please give our video a thumbs up. Your encouragement is our greatest motivation. Thank you. Lastly, let's talk about the Warriors and their player Jordan Poole. Did a shot selection make sense? This is a subjective question, but let's look at some statistics. In the game against the Lakers, Jordan Poole made 7 of 13 three-pointers, which is a good shooting percentage. However, his field goal percentage was only 40%, and he missed a lot of shots in the restricted area. From this perspective, some people may think that his shot selection was not appropriate. But as a young player, Jordan Poole still has room for improvement and adjustment in his game. Let's see how he performs in the future. Let's talk about the injured players in the NBA. Yesterday, the Suns not only lost to the Nuggets, but also faced a big problem their potential Hall of Fame player, CP3, got injured during the game. The latest news shows that he will be out for a week, which means he will miss the next three games. This is definitely a big blow to the Suns because he is the team's on-court commander. Although the team still has backup guards like Cameron Payne and Landry Shamet, their abilities are clearly inferior to CP3's. In addition, the Suns' bench strength was already not good and now with even their starting lineup having issues, it will undoubtedly increase the difficulty of the Suns' comeback in this series. In my opinion, in the upcoming games, it is very likely that KD and Devin Booker will play the full game, and they must perform above their usual level. In particular, the deadly KD has been playing politely since joining the Suns this season, with an average of only 18 shots per game in the playoffs. Fans should know that in the past few seasons, KD took at least 20 shots per game in the playoffs. Therefore, without CP3, KD will undoubtedly be more dominant on the offensive end. As for the Nuggets, in this game, Jamal Murray did not perform well, so Nikola Jokic took 30 shots, made 17 of them, and scored 39 points. In fact, as long as the Nuggets players can stay healthy, there should be no problem winning this series. The difference now is whether they can end the series before CP3 returns. To put it simply, they should avoid lingering too long in this series. Moving on to the Heat vs Knicks game, Jimmy Butler of the Heat got injured in the first game and did not play in this game. Caleb Martin took his place as the starting player. As for the Knicks, Julius Randle, who missed the first game, returned to the court in this game. So, in terms of lineup, the Knicks were more complete, especially since Tyler Harrow and Victor Oladipo of the Heat were also injured. However, at the end of the second quarter, after Love hit a three-pointer, the Heat entered the second half with a three-point lead. More importantly, after the third quarter, the Heat were still leading the Knicks by one point. To be honest, if you are a Knicks fan, your emotions must be complicated at this point. Jokingly, they're really tough, aren't they? Even without their main players, they not only can't pull ahead, but they're also behind. 
This is, of course, a characteristic of the Heat, which is their tenacity. Moving on to the NBA games, the first news is about the MVP award and the battle between the Lakers and the Warriors. In the 76ers vs. Nuggets game, Joel Embiid, the 76ers' leading scorer, won his first MVP award, beating out Nikola Jokic from the Nuggets. Embiid scored 915 points and received 73 votes, a significant victory. Despite personally supporting Jokic, it's great to see Embiid receive recognition for his back-to-back -back seasons as the league's leading scorer. Interestingly, the last MVP from the 76ers was Allen Iverson, who was also the league's leading scorer in the 2000-2001 season with an average of 31.1 points per game. In the Lakers vs. Warriors game, Jordan Poole's contested shot was discussed, but the Lakers ultimately won, with James Harden leading the team with 45 points. In the Suns vs. Nuggets game, Chris Paul's injury is a significant blow for the Suns, as he is the team's floor general. Although Cameron Payne and Landry Shamat will step up in his absence, they have a clear gap in ability compared to Paul. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker will have to perform exceptionally well in the upcoming games to fill in the gap. The Knicks and Heat game saw both teams missing key players due to injuries, but the Heat still managed to take a three-point lead going into halftime. However, the Knicks eventually won with Jalen Brunson scoring 30 points, Julius Randle and RJ Barrett scoring 25 and 24 points respectively, and Josh Hart putting up an impressive performance with 14 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 assists. Finally, in the Lakers vs Warriors game, the Lakers won with Anthony Davis scoring 14 points and the Splash Brothers combining for 20 points in the first quarter. In this NBA game, the New York Knicks played against the Dallas Mavericks. In the fourth quarter, Josh Hart hit a game-tying three-pointer, and Jalen Brunson followed it up with a three-pointer of his own. He then made a layup, giving him five consecutive points. In the end, the Knicks won the game 111-105, tying the series 1-1. Brunson was the key player for the Mavericks, scoring a game-high 30 points, while Julius Randle and RJ Barrett contributed 25 and 24 points respectively. The Knicks rely heavily on these three players on offense, as well as Emmanuel Quickly who can score an average of 14 points per game off the bench. Josh Hart, who had 14 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 assists, was also an important role player for the Knicks due to his ability to shoot threes, play defense, and grab rebounds. The Miami Heat lost to the New York Knicks, but Caleb Martin had a great performance, scoring 22 points. The Heat already won the first game of the series on the road, and if Jimmy Butler returns from injury, they are still a strong contender. In another game, the Los Angeles Lakers faced off against the Golden State Warriors. The Lakers won 117-112 on the road, breaking the Warriors' home court advantage in the first game of the series. In the first quarter, AD scored 14 points, while the Splash Brothers combined for 20 points, including four three-pointers. Kevin Looney also pulled down seven rebounds, including three offensive rebounds, helping the Warriors take a 31-29 lead. In the second quarter, Jordan Poole scored 13 points for the Warriors, and Dennis Schroeder scored 11 points for the Lakers, with LBJ contributing 8 points. The Lakers led 65-64 at halftime. In the third quarter, D'Angelo Russell led the Lakers with 10 points, helping them take an 8-point lead. In the fourth quarter, the Lakers led by 8 points at one point, but the Warriors came back with an 8-0 run led by Stephen Curry and Jordan Poole, including two three-pointers. However, the Lakers ultimately won the game thanks to D'Angelo Russell's beautiful low-post move on Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole missing a key three-pointer. The Splash Brothers combined for 73 points, making 18 three-pointers, and Kevin Looney had 23 rebounds, but the Lakers outscored the Warriors in the paint, compensating for their poor shooting from beyond the arc. In this game, both teams had different playing styles, which affected the number of free throws they took. The Lakers took 29 free throws, while the Warriors only took 6. If we just look at the numbers, fans might wonder why there is such a big difference. However, when we look at the shot distribution chart, it becomes clear that the Lakers focused on mid-range in the paint, while the Warriors mostly took shots from the outside. So, the Lakers played smartly by taking advantage of their frontcourt dominance and attacking the paint. AD had a great game with 30 points, 23 rebounds, and 4 blocks, including one against Stephen Curry in the fourth quarter. The Lakers blocked a total of 10 shots in this game. On the other hand, since the Warriors did not have an advantage in the paint, they had to rely on outside shooting. Fans should know that the Warriors shot 39% from beyond the arc, which was actually a good percentage. Jordan Poole had a great game, scoring 21 points on 7 of 15 shooting. His FG percent was even better than Klay Thompson's, who shot 9 of 25 for the game. So, when Poole had the chance to take a shot in the final seconds, it was not a bad decision. He had already made 6 three-pointers in the game, and his shooting range was within the realm of possibility. 
Moreover, the Lakers' defensive strategy was clear, double-team Stephen Curry and force him to pass the ball. Therefore, Poole had an opportunity to take the shot, and he did. Even though he missed, it was a reasonable decision. Some might argue that he should have tried to drive to the basket, but that would have been difficult since AD and LeBron were both guarding the paint. The risk of getting blocked was high. So, in this case, taking the three-pointer was not a bad decision, and the Warriors coach, Steve Kerr, even said that Poole had the green light to take the shot. In the end, the shot missed, but the decision to take it was reasonable. In this game, the Lakers had key contributions from D'Angelo Russell and Dennis Schroeder, who both scored 19 points, and LeBron James, who had 22 points. However, I want to discuss Jared Vanderbilt's performance. He had a great fourth quarter, hitting threes, grabbing offensive rebounds, and blocking shots. In the final minute of the game, coach subbed out D'Angelo Russell and put in Vanderbilt for his defense. In hindsight, this was a successful move, and the strategy to double-team Stephen Curry also worked. This is different from the way the Celtics defended James Harden, but there is no right or wrong way to defend. It all comes down to the results. The Warriors will have some trouble in the next game. The Lakers will still attack the paint, and will their three-point shooting percentage remain as low? We'll have to wait and see. If the Warriors want to win, they need to challenge the Lakers in the paint and not just rely on their outside shooting. Otherwise, they will be too passive, and this is where having a strong inside presence is an advantage. The Lakers were a great example of this in this game. Congratulations to the Lakers for getting their first win. Can the Warriors bounce back in the next game? Let's find out together.